hi and welcome to some Hearts of Iron 4 with me, Jazeero. Oh, I am in love with this game. This game is absolutely amazing. It's uh, a Paradox Studio game, uh, so it's a grand strategy game. If you don't know th their kind of games, they're uh, Crusader Kings 2, uh, Europa Universalis, uh, they Stellaris very recently. So it's very much a management game. Uh, it's set in World War II, as you can maybe guess from the picture in the background. If you don't know, that's the uh, Normandy landing on D-Day. Um, and uh, yeah, so World War II. And tonight, we're going to play as none other than Canada. Yes, look at that. I've, I've updated my flag to reflect what we're going to be playing on tonight. Uh, we're going to be playing Canada. Uh, I have a couple of mods installed. The first mod is called Better Canada, which sort of rebalances Canada and creates a unique focus tree. You don't know what a focus tree is? We're going to find out uh, in a moment. And the other mod that I got is called Canadian Technology, which uh, it just replaced the name and the pictures of some of the equipment in the game from generic standard like airplane to like a Spitfire or planes that Canada would have used or tanks that Canada would have used during World War II. But anyway, enough of the introduction. Let's get started. We're going to go single player. We're going to start a new game. As you can see, I have practiced a little bit before to try and make sure that I don't uh, screw up completely and this is gonna be a historical well historical uh, mostly historical playthrough in that I'm gonna keep to the sort of event I'm not gonna go crazy and invade the United States uh, that might come in a future playthrough but uh, so we're gonna mostly stick to historically accurate things it's not gonna be exactly the same because there is some randomness and we're gonna have to adapt and also I'm the one in charge so it's not gonna be the same thing we're gonna start in January 1936 uh, the game also lets you start in August 14 1939 just before World War two we're gonna start three years before have a little time to set ourselves up the way we want to we're gonna select that scenario this is uh, like the major nations in the game that they let you they sort of offer them to you as what you might want to pick. So you have France, the United States, uh, United Kingdom, the German Reich, uh, Italy, Japan, and the Soviet Union, and each of them have their unique challenge and ability. We're not going to be playing as a major nation, we're going to play be playing as what's called in this game as a minor nation, which is going to be Canada, over here, right over here. Look at this big, big ass country. Um, so this is what we're going to be playing as. We're going to be playing on hard mode, or veteran, uh, the difference is that basically we're going to have 20% less production of everything. We're going to have... Everything's going to take 10% longer to research. And we have 25% less political power. If you've played this game and you played on Recruit or Regular and you found it too easy, really try to play on Veteran. It's quite a challenge. But, of course, I wouldn't take the easy way out. So... All right, and we're going to keep historical focuses uh, for the AI. That's going to mean that uh, the AI is going to more or less, not exactly, but more or less follow the events of World War II. Uh, so there's not going to be any like crazy England declaring war on the Soviet Union on day one uh, or anything too crazy like that. Th th there can still be crazy thing. And also, uh, it gives us kind of a superpower in that we know what happened in World War II. So, you know, when 1939 is going to approach, we got to have our armies ready because war is going to break out. So we, we, we get a little bit of a, of a future knowledge that we would not normally have. So let's, let's get started. Uh, also, because, you know, I love that big bong. Uh, also, because I like to make things harder on myself, I'm not going to pause the game. So I'm going to set the game on speed 3 and I'm going to let it run throughout on speed 3 unless, you know, except when I stop and I save and things like that. So we're going to be going on speed 3 the whole time. So that means if like things starts happening and I start panicking, too bad. I need to really be good. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a lot of decision and pick a lot of things. And you might be kind of not know what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, but don't fear, it's January 1, 1936, and we're going to have three years until any action happened. And I'm going to go through everything during those three years, because otherwise it would be kind of boring to watch not much happening. But I'm going to make a bunch of decisions, and I'm going to hit play, and then I'm going to explain them to you. How, how's chat doing? Um, 
Now, don't worry, guys. We're not all doomed. We're, we're going to do great. We're going to do amazing. Uh, we're Canada is going to win the war on its own. Uh, so, going to make a few quick choices. And right now, you're going to have no idea what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. But it is uh, important that I do these things. Uh, what did I want for my... Oh, yes, I definitely want this. And... Don't want this, don't want this. Probably gonna take this. Here. Go! Making lots of decisions. Don't worry about it. Everything will be explained in time. And right now, if you know the game, if you've played the game before or if you've watched a lot of the game, you might know what I'm doing and you might be, you know, wondering. I will also explain my decision and not just the game. I don't want this to be like fully a tutorial series because there's much better tutorials out there uh, on this game and uh, resources that's fine airplanes so there, there's much better resources out there than than, than me but uh, in any case I'm gonna go through it anyway because there's not there's not gonna be much else to do in the beginning once I hit play I'm giving myself a little bit of a break in that I didn't hit play immediately because that would be that would be really hard <laughs> to do all of this uh, with with the time passing by. So instead, uh, just getting set up. You know, we're gonna assume that I've got a, a couple of years beforehand to set things up the way I want them to be set up. And uh, oops. And uh, that that that's what we're gonna give myself. Here we're gonna train. 8, 4, that's 12. Start with just that. There we go. Change our priorities. There we go, now we're setting the speed at 3, and I'm hitting play. So the game has started. Wow, okay. <laughs> that was a lot of stuff. I hope you're still watching and I didn't like b bore you to that. But the game, now I'm gonna explain what, what happened. And also I'm gonna, almost forgot to hit these buttons right here. Very good. And we're gonna do some customization. I mean, I wanna name like my armies after my subscribers. I wanna do a lot of fun stuff and customization. But right now, as you're seeing, you're seeing like days go by uh, in this game. Uh, it's January 6th, 1936. If you look at the top, and I've conveniently put my face in the bottom this time so that you can see the top, uh, you can see the time ticking by and it's going one hour, like hour, 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 hour. And those are like real time hours, if you will. So days go by in the game at this speed, and uh, so a day will last about, what, 30 seconds to a minute? Some, some probably less than that, but anyway. And each day ticks by, and every hour is like a turn, or like a, a tick of the game. Something can happen every hour. So when you have combat going on, it goes hour by hour. You can watch it move by hour. Uh, it's not the most exciting combat, because it's mostly numbers, but... This is a paradox game, so if you're expecting something other than, than numbers, you're, this, is, this is the wrong game. But this is the game, and I, I like this game. It's heavy on management and everything. All right, let's go through what we have here. We have Canada. This is World War II. Uh, Canada, if you don't know, was uh, actually had a huge participation in World War II. It's, it had about 11 to 12 million people in Canada uh, at the time, and... There was over a million people served in the army wearing the uniform. So that's 10% of the population. And half of those went to Europe. So you have like a huge amount of the population that contributed to the war effort. And Canada is often for, uh, forgotten in a lot of the World War II history because, you know, we're not the United States, we're not the Soviet Union, we're not England, uh, we're not the, one of the major nations, but Canada had a big impact. Uh, so, and we're going to try to have a giant impact and it's gonna be a lot easier for us to have a giant impact because the AI in this game is not always the best but uh, so so let's get started about Canada so this game uh, with the mods our Prime Minister is Mackenzie King and uh, we have some things that are affecting our country here this is our sort of political uh, status in Canada so we have tepid military enthusiasm so we have 1% of our population that's willing to be enlisted and be in our army. So that's not very good. And worse than that, we have a conscription refusal. 
uh, especially historically, the French-Canadian part of Canada was very, very, very much against the war and against the conscription, especially. Uh, in the First World War, there was a huge crisis and riots because of the conscription. And so we have 35% of what we would normally be able to recruit just gone. We will not participate in the war. So that's a huge hit. And this is one of the biggest weakness of Canada in this game that we have a very very limited manpower pool right now we have a hundred thousand people ready to serve but that's really really not a lot in terms of World War II we're gonna need to increase that and there's ways to work to increase that other things on the screen that we can see we can see right now our leading party is a liberal party they're democratic there is democratic communist um, fascist and unaligned in this game are the sort of political things so we're gonna be on the side of the allies we're gonna work with the allies you can take decisions that will change that you could go fascist Canada and you can invade the US it's totally doable I'm sure there's plenty of videos of people doing it already on YouTube but it can be quite fun or you can go communist Canada and you know you can do a lot of silly things in this game which is which is fun and these are like the different laws that we have going on uh, I'm not gonna go into too much details uh, this is how many people we can recruit. We only have volunteers right now. We don't have any conscription. Uh, we are exporting half of our resources. And our mobilization of our economy is not really military. It's early mobilization. So we're not really good in the military sense. We can hire here political advisors, which we will be doing very early on. We have tank designer companies. Uh, we have military high command. They can do a lot of things. Right now, these cost political power. And we only have 24 and they cost 150 so we can't do anything with that for a while meanwhile you know almost two months have gone by while i'm explaining this so th this is this screen now let's go check out the uh focus tree so this is a unique focus tree that comes from the mod better canada and this is what makes it a lot more fun to play and these are decisions political decision that are gonna affect the way we play. And their structure is a tree. They usually take between 70 to 140 days and they cost political power to do. And uh, right now we are working on Bennett's New Deal. Though previously speaking out against what he saw as wasteful spending and communist ambition, RB saw the writing on the walls and began to model his own New Deal. The progressive reform brought new so socialist policy, an attempt to gain the vote of the working class. The change came as too little too late, losing the election. His 11th hour proposal lived on, continued by the succeeding government. So before the election, the previous government created a New Deal, and uh, the current government decided to follow through with it. What that's going to do, it doesn't do much. It means that our next industry research technology is going to be going to take half as long but mostly it's important because it unlocks what's under it and we Canada has no production we have like nothing right now and that is really worrying if you're trying to build an army so what we're going to be going is we're going to be going down this path here which is going to start building military factories and when we build those military factories we're going to start being able to use them to create material that we can give to our soldiers and you know, fight wars. So that's that's the plan on this screen. Speaking of which, the, the New Deal is about to come in, so we're gonna wait, and probably a bunch of things are gonna happen all at once, because everyone in the world is researching their own focuses. So we're gonna see what happens in about a day here. There we go! The remilitarization of the Rhineland! We're gonna put that on the side, we're gonna read that in just a moment. Yeah, we got the Bennett's New Deal, that's really nice. We're gonna start the War Purchasing Board. So we're going to start purchasing war. So the remilitarization of the Rhineland. Germany has stationed troops in the Rhineland territory, close to the French border, in clear violation of the Treaty of Versailles. The local population cheered the German soldiers on, while the diplomatic reaction from France and Britain have so far been muted. It's no more than the Germans walking their own backyard, a political commentator in Britain observed. So Germany is starting to, uh, you know, do some power moves here. They're starting to remilitarize the Rhineland. Which brings us to this screen over here. Might as well talk about it right now. Take over Monaco. Actually, that's kind of part of my strategy. We Historically, Canada was big into Italy. And we're probably going to go fight in Italy and occupy Italy in this game. So, yeah, we're, we might take over Monaco, actually. So this is the production screen. So these are different production lines. Right now, our country is building infantry equipment, so guns. Uh, towed artillery, so artillery guns. And towed anti-tank guns. 
and we're also building convoys. So this, these are our, our different little factories. We can assign them, as you can see, I can move them around. And this is like how efficient. So as you move your factories around, things get less efficient. They take time to, to become producing at their maximum capacity. And um, so right now what we really want is we want more artillery. We, we want more of everything, really. So we're going to leave it there. And as we get more things, we're probably we're going to assign them around these things as they come in. Also, building these things costs resources like uh, steel, tungsten, oil. And we have to trade for these or have them. Actually, Canada is pretty resource rich in oh, the Treaty of Addis Ababa. So Italy has annexed Ethiopia right down here. So Italy was at war with Ethiopia and they've just captured it. So that's not good. Um, but yeah, if we look at the resources that Canada has, it's not too bad. We got some oil, some tungsten, uh, a bunch of steel, some aluminum. Uh, we're not we're not doing too bad. We're not like the United States, which has insane amount of resources. Like if you, I don't know if you can see the numbers, but like 350 oil right there in California, and it's like, well, we have 12 uh, or eight, anyway. But uh, we're gonna be doing all right for for the stuff we're gonna have. All right, let's go check out the technologies uh, screen. So technologies, we have three technology slots. So we can research three things at once and it take different amount of times. And if you go check, you have different tabs. We have industry, engineering, air doctrine, air, naval doctrine, naval, land doctrine, artillery, armor, support battalions, and infantry. Loads of things. I'm gonna explain a bit of the choice I made. The first thing I went for is basic machine tools. That's gonna increase our production efficiency by 5%, well, the maximum efficiency. Efficiency, like I said, takes a while to build up. So that's really good to have, and it unlocks other technology that are really good. One of the usual things I do is I go for electronic mechanical engineering here because it decreases research time for everything by 2%, but I did some calculation, and that's gonna take five years to pay itself back, and I don't have five years. In five years, it's gonna be 1941. We're gonna be in the middle of the war, so it's too slow. What I went for instead is research the Ottawa-class destroyers, because our navy is pathetic. We have two ships. They're, they're right here. The HMCS Sagne and the HMCS Kina. We have two ships, and, and they're useless ships. So we need to have a navy. We need to build a navy. We need to build everything. Canada really doesn't have much. The other thing I'm researching right now is motorized, so trucks, because we're going to need to put trucks to carry people around to do different things and uh, it's important to research those things very early we'll, we'll, we'll uh, decide baby G, you're probably gonna have a division uh, for you for the invasion but uh, I, I just want to make sure I cover most of the things uh, this is the construction tab so over here there's different things you can build you can build military factories civilian factories dockyards all sorts of things right now we're building uh, military factories we need more military production and we need that fast so we're concentrating on just building those there's certain drawbacks because you need to use some of your production for civilian goods and stuff but right now we're not too worried about that just yet and uh anything else that's important over here we can also talk about uh the recruitment screen so right now i'm training our units that we have if we look at them right there in uh, New Brunswick. They are running some exercises. You can see them, they're doing push-ups and stuff. We're like, come on, give me 20. You need to become better. Uh, they're doing that to give us army experience because right now we don't really know how to fight. We don't really have much experience. And we're gonna use that experience to make our army better as you usually do. And so right now we're training a bunch of militia troops uh, to go join. Uh, because we need a bigger army. We have 8 division. We're going to bring that to 12. We'll we'll try to bring that up higher. But we don't want to go too big too fast. Because we're, we're going to run out of people. Literally. That's how little few people we have. And we also have uh, some cavalry. So we have two types of divisions. We have our district militia. Which is a bunch of infantry. An artillery gun and an anti-tank gun. So these are these people over here. And we also have some cavalry. Which is just a bunch of guys on horses. And they're... They're having a party in, in Ontario right now. And they're also doing push-ups. And uh, so, so yeah. And we're going to use that experience to... And there's a lot going on in here. 
And if you're really interested in this game, uh, there's a lot of guides about this, the division designer, but it's how we create our troops. We can decide how many infantry regiments, we are they regiments? I think they're regiments. Battalions? I think they're regiments. Anyway, we, we can decide how many infantry, how much uh, artillery we want, and, and all of that. And it's really fun, but we also need to produce every single gun we need. So if we need 600 guns, well, we need to put those in. The War Purchasing Board. Very nice. Let's move on to the Canadian Cycle and Motor Co. Limited. More and more military factories. It's all I'm working on right now, just military factories. Uh, right now we're building quite a few guns. We're building 11 guns a day. Uh, we're going to need more than that because also those guns, they break, uh, they get lost. Uh, also, those guns are also kind of bullets and everything. They, they're kind of an abstraction. So there's a lot to do here. Um, I'm going to try to start doing a bit of customization and maybe if there's more things to talk about, I'll talk about them as, as we, we go through uh, what we're going to do. So here we're going to go check out our uh, little cavalry. Cavalry is pretty useless in the game, uh, as it was in World War II, uh, except for holding back uh, during occupation. So if there's resistance, there's like people fighting and everything, we're going to use the cavalry for that. But right now, they're just running exercise to give us more experience. Over here, we're going to have our first army, which we're going to call the first army very imaginatively named the first army and we're gonna call we're gonna put hmm, John Montag as the leader in charge of this army and right now they're a bunch of militia as you can see they're really crappy troops. but we're gonna we're gonna make them better we're gonna give them training we're gonna have like some rocky training montages uh, which I guess they're having right now and we're gonna make them a lot 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 better now let's talk a little bit about Basic machine tools! Yes, technology! Let's pick up a new technology right away. Because of the focus I did, I have a 50% uh, rebate on researching concentrated industry. Now I have to pick between concentrated and dispersed industry. Dispersed industry is only really good if you're going to get bombed. So we're going to pick concentrated industry because we want as much industry as densely packed as possible. And I'm going to talk really briefly about how what's kind of the advantages of Canada here. What's good, what's bad about Canada? So, bad things about Canada. Very low production right now. Uh, we're far away from the fight. We have very few people. Good things about Canada. We're far away from the fight. That is very good because we don't have to worry about defending our own borders. Like, a naval invasion of Canada is extremely unlikely. It's almost impossible. You have to. We have the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, and we got the United States there to protect us. We're gonna we're gonna rely a little bit on the United States. If you don't if you don't mind, we're gonna lean on them a little bit. Um, so that's gonna give us. That means we don't have to worry about defense. Uh, our resource situation is not too bad, and uh, so yeah. So th these are the main consideration we have to take while we're gonna play Canada. And uh, right. So we're now in June, about half a year has been gone, and I'm going to pause right here because we're going to take a little break here, and we're going to be back very soon. Thanks for watching. Power surge detected already? We just, we just took care of that! <laughs> We just took care of that! I think they've abandoned me. I think the entire village has ran away. They, they thought I'm like a terrible, terrible, terrible person. Okay. So we need to angle this thing, propel it, and release it at the right time. So... Ang angle the thing, angle the thing, and then we go... Oh. 